Okay, now I've actually uh, loosened up the dust cap here on the top using the spanner wrench. You can pick up a spanner wrench probably $15 on Amazon.com. Fifteen, ten bucks. So now I'm going to take this off. Let me move closer. Get in here. Take this off. And now I have my wiper seal. If you look here, you'll see the black. And this kind of cleans the this rubber portion cleans the shaft as it goes zip in and out. And that's connected to this uh, little piston here. This yeah, I guess you'd call it piston here, cylinder piston. Um, the purpose of this, like I said, is just to wipe the shaft as it goes in and out. But if you look deep in here, I don't know if it can be seen on camera, there's an actual C-clip that goes around here on the edge. There's a little cutout on the inside of the uh, shock body. What I'm going to do is push down on this, like so, get access to that seat. Now that it's not pressurized, I can push down. Uh, get access to that C-clip, like this. You want to be delicate and gentle if you can, and get it out. Now that I have it out, I have full access to lift this, this whole shock shaft out. Be careful because oil will spill um, as you do it. There's also another C-clip on the bottom for the, the bottom, uh, I guess, butt plate or stop plate of the shock. The reason why this went in is because earlier as I was playing around with it off camera, um, there was vacuum inside and it kind of lifted this up. I'm going to keep this C-clip in for this. You can take it out. It's up to you. But just know that once you take it out, and if you push down on this, this will plop out and oil will spill everywhere, along with the sliding piston that's inside. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Let me see if I can do this without making a mess. Uh, I don't know if this is on the cam. Well, hold on. Bear with me here. I'm no uh, cameraman. Move this closer. Okay, so I'm slowly, I should actually change my shirt because this is a nice shirt. I don't want to mess up with oil. Okay, there we go. So now if you look, I plopped it up and out of the shock body. I'm being careful because I don't want to make a mess or I want to make as little a mess as possible as I do this. There we go. All right, cool. So now... What I have in my hand is the actual innards of the shock. I have the shaft here. I have the shock piston, this gray uh, metal portion here. I have the shims, shim stack there, shim stack here. This is a uh, compression, and this is rebound when it comes up. And I have these two washers. The two washers here are from Home Depot, just to keep it in place and, and stop it. Um, I followed a Bill Stein. Uh, guideline so to speak and it was hard to find the exact stop I guess back back plate uh, shim for this so I went ahead and used the washers it was the closest thing I found measurement wise to what was listed in the Bilstein guideline um, the shock oil that's in here and that I use is Maxima shock oil it's uh, the heavy shock oil it's 130 130-390 is their part number it's 10 weight shock fluid yeah, it's some pretty good stuff. It, uh, what is it? It's used for... I forgot. It was... Uh, let me see. All in all, it's pretty darn good. It was used, I think, on Olin's and some other big name, Fox Shock or something like that, they were bragging about. So what I'm going to do now after this is use the... I believe it's 17. Yeah, 17 millimeter. And I'm going to break this free. But if I do that, I also have to secure this in here like so. Once I break this nut free, I can literally take all of this off and go through the shims individually and the piston as well. What you see here is this um, orange is the um, it's the metal. There's two versions from Bill Stein. There's a metal version and then there's a oh, I think it's an all Teflon version, all black. Um, I just called who was it? It's in the post. Gosh darn it. Um, basically, the shop company I got this from recommended using the metal one as it seals better. I didn't know that initially, so that's what I have here. This is the, uh, the gosh, it slips my mind. Piston band. Oh, gosh. Piston band. Yeah. So what this is, is this makes sure that the, um, the actual shock piston itself doesn't make contact with the walls of the shock body, and it ensures, number one, that no fluid comes around. As little as possible comes around. And you want to make sure all the fluid is forced through the orifices 
of the actual shock piston so it goes through your uh, shim stack all right so let me clean this mess up and uh, continue recording give me a second okay within the shock body you have oil you have your piston with shim stacks and the piston shaft and you have a sliding piston or dividing piston which is in between the oil in the chamber and the air at the bottom that you um, the nitrogen you just released or air what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour all the fluid back into this container here take all the oil out and get that sliding piston out so you guys can visually see it and also the bottom the butt plate of the shark too as well so I'll do that now and then we'll resume the video okay so I poured all the oil shock fluid um, back into its, its uh, case and what we have here I don't know if you can see inside that's the dividing piston and that's the butt plate what I'm going to use to get this out which is what I had at hand right now is a, uh, a broken broom stick basically so I can push it from the top or bottom actually you know what I'll remove the C clip just so you guys can see what that looks like on the bottom and I'll push it out through the bottom so he here is the C clip uh, there we go like I said bear with me I am no cameraman but you want to do this this is a steel body so I'm not too worried about screwdriver scratching and and ruining the inside I'm not pushing that hard the steel shock body so now that I have the bottom portion out, I will, and I know the missus may not be happy, but she'll survive, um, push this out with as minimal oil on the floor as possible. Okay. This is the butt plate here. Let me get that in, in focus, and that's the self-healing rubber, self-healing rubber uh, deal there on the bottom. Alright, here comes the sliding piston. There we go. So now, I have a completely empty steel BC Racing BR shock body, and in my hand, I have the dividing sliding piston or dividing piston. Uh, the sliding piston, this part, the concave portion, always faces up towards the shaft. And um, when putting it back together, um, how do I explain this? When you have, and I'll show this, but when you have the shock shaft back in the shock body, and the shock is at full compression to where you can still see the ring any further this ring would disappear this ring C ring you, so you still must be able to see this ring at full compression wherever the bottom of that shaft is this sliding piston needs to be in the center as close to center as possible of the space between the bottom of that shock shaft nut and this butt plate you want it to be center so on the bottom of this will be air and on the top will be the oil inside of this chamber so this is just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Blase, blase. O-ring, Teflon seal here. It's an aluminum. It's made out of aluminum, this part, at least. So, okay, now that I got that, I'm going to get over here to the shock shaft and, most importantly, the piston and shim stack. There you go, piston and shim stack. All right, give me a second. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, remove the lock nut on the shaft, the, the shaft nut. piston and the shim stack. I'm trying to get as much as I can and keep it together because I don't want to have to redo this 
all over again. But if you look here, these are the shims, and this is the piston. Uh, these are the shims, and this is the Bilstein piston. This is the COB piston, uh, which stands for compression only bypass. I just found that out not too long ago from an awesome guy in uh, Australia, I think it is. New Zealand? I think New Zealand. Yeah, but compression only bypass is uh, what it is. This is the compression side, just so you can see it. Now, granted, like I said, this is a BC Racing BR shock, but I changed it with a Bilstein 46 millimeter piston and Bilstein um, gosh with Bilstein um, there we go damn it yeah Bilstein 46 millimeter piston and Bilstein piston um, it's on the tip of my dang tongue but yeah all Bilstein internal parts except for the shims the shims I got from SDI Suspension Direct. Yeah, type in Google Suspension Direct SDI space SDI and you'll find their website. They have quite a few shims. And I also list on this post on Club Lexus quite a few other areas where you can get the harder to find shim sizes that are not on SDI. Um, the purpose of me reopening this is to show you guys this, but also I want to let me take this back off. I want to replace the bypass shim which because this is an adjustable shock I don't really need uh, for what I'm doing I don't really need a bypass shim or bleed shim not bypass shim bleed shim in place I'm changing the bleed shim which is here with the cutouts if you see four cutouts whereas a standard shim is completely circular these four cutouts are to let oil seep by at certain speeds, at the low speeds, so to speak, uh, low shaft speeds. Um, the benefit of that is there's not as much force at low shaft speeds. Uh, for what you're trying to do, there are some that come with only two cutouts, four cutouts, and I think eight, I believe, with various thicknesses uh, as well. I don't need this at all. What I'm going to do is replace it with the equivalent, which is the exact same thickness and diameter, but with no cutouts, a complete full shim like this. Um, like I said, I have the adjustable knob on the top of the BC Racing BR shock, so I can, the, the bleed that these would provide, these holes, is actually provided through this little inlet port here, vent port, or fluid port. So the fluid can come in here and out there, and it's adjustable by the knob on the top of the shock. So that's the same thing as this, but with uh, greater adjustability, so I don't need this to sum it up. So I'll go ahead and um, exchange this out, put this back together, or show you the process of putting it back together, and we'll go from there.